Hello and welcome back to The Note. What do we mean by materiality? When a company announces its results which are material, is that material to whom? Who is their audience? What exactly do they mean when they say that they're material? Now this could sound like a philosophical question, but it actually has some very important practical real-world consequences. With me now to discuss this is a Harvard Business School professor and chairman of Arabesque Partners, Bob Eccles. Bob, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, my pleasure. Now, the received wisdom is that when a board is uh, uh, announcing its results, it is responsible to its shareholders. Uh, shareholder value is what matters. Is that right? Not really. Um, right. It's, um, it's interesting. There's a prevailing ideology all around the world that the uh, fiduciary duty of the board is to shareholders or investors. Uh, in point of fact, what the law says all over the world is that the fiduciary duty of a company's board of directors is to the corporation itself as a legal person, right. and it should take into account shareholders and other stakeholders, it can under the business judgment rule, in what it believes to be the interests of the corporation. Okay, so the corporation is owned by shareholders, but the corporation has other people who have stakes in it. I mean, I don't want to make a sort of technical sort mm. of argument, but the shareholders actually don't own the corporation. They own shares right. in the corporation. The corporation owns itself. Okay. So if it's the case that we don't have to treat shareholders as being uniquely important, where does that leave us with materiality? Explain to me the statement you're asking boards to make when they say what they regard as being material. So you were right in the beginning when you said materiality is a fundamental concept. Uh, it's an elusive one. Um, when you read the literature, court cases, securities commissions, accounting, uh, it's entity specific. It's based on judgment. It's central to financial reporting, sustainability reporting, integrated reporting. And my argument is that what's material, what's important to the interests of the corporation, depends upon audience, and it depends upon the time frame that the corporation uses to consider the impact of its decision on those audiences. For example, if the board determines that the only significant audience for the corporation is short-term investors, it can do so. Legally, it can do so. Uh, all that will be material from a reporting point of view then will be short-term financial results. Which is what we get now. Which is what we get now largely. Environmental, social, and governance issues, uh, how important those are, what they are, vary by sector, um, wouldn't be considered. Okay, so you're not saying companies have to publish environmental and social factors such as their carbon footprint or whatever. What you are saying is that they have to explain why they don't regard such things as being material, why, the, why those things are not material to the audience they're addressing. Correct. All I'm asking for in this notion of a statement of significant audiences of materiality is that the board declare what limited number of audiences it perceives to be important, that then will be the basis of determining what's material for reporting purposes. It's values neutral. The board decides. Okay. How are you going to make this happen? Who is going to help enforce this? Does this need legal heft, or are you going to try to use moral suasion? And I guess, importantly, shareholders do matter. Do you have big shareholders like the big pension funds on board for this? So shareholders do matter. There's really three prongs to this so-called campaign uh, mm -hmm. that I'm launching with Tim Yeomans, my collaborator on this. Uh, first is to get legal memos from law firms all over the world clarifying that the fiduciary duty of the board is to the corporation. Those are now curated on the American Bar Association's Task Force on Sustainable Development website. Second is to get companies to start issuing a statement of significant audiences of materiality. One company has, this is a new idea, Aegon, Dutch insurance right. company, you can see that. And clearly I want to get shareholder backing. So we're in the early stages, but I'm in the process of talking to the big pension funds, sovereign wealth funds, uh, as part of this campaign to get them to go to the companies in their portfolio and say, we'd like for your board to issue this statement of significant audiences and materiality. It's not a big ask. It's one page. It's just asking for transparency on what the priorities are for the corporation as determined by the board. Okay. How would you gauge your chances of success? We certainly know here in the States that any 
notion of uh, environmental responsibility or that, that, that uh, even that carbon emissions are, yep. are damaging to the environment has become a political issue. How easy is it going to be to get this done? Um, I don't think it's ever easy to make any kind of change in the corporate sector, particularly when it comes to public disclosures. And as I said, I'm relying upon moral suasion. But again, let me go back and say that um, this is values neutral. My values are clear. Hmm. I'm not saying that the board has to care about the company's carbon emissions. I'd like to know if they don't. So this is just basically be transparent about what you think the priorities to be, the significant audiences. People will make their choices. Investors will make choices. Employees will make choices. Customers will make choices. And I suppose one final question is, is there a possibility of this happening voluntarily? For example, the letter to shareholders, uh, which is now absolutely standard, at least in this country, from the, from the CEO, is a custom. There's no legal basis for it, as I understand it. That Could is this correct. Happen? It's a custom. It became prevalent in the United States in the 50s, it seems. Um, it's not a required filing document in the US for the Form 10K. Uh, it's a good analogy. I would hope that the statement of significant audiences by the board become a voluntary disclosure, just like the Dear Shareholder letter. Okay. Well, thank you very much you. indeed. We will see what happens here. For me, I have to say that the one critical insight, which I must admit I did not know after many, many years of covering this, is that in fact, boards do not have a legal responsibility to privilege the interests of shareholders over others. I, don't, I suspect there are many other people like me who similarly could not have told you that. It's fascinating to hear that even legal bodies like the American Bar Association are on board with this concept. I suspect that this campaign will run and run.